What's happening with the Melbourne property market going into September? And what happened during August? Let's take a look at some of the trends here. So throughout August, the Melbourne property market had done positively, but not ultra strongly. And we can see this for a few reasons. Firstly, clearance rates have been quite positive at the mid 70s. It's fluctuated week to week, sometimes a little bit below 75, sometimes a bit above, but it's been about mid 70s for August and also during July. We can see, however, that there aren't that many properties coming to market. And now the property numbers have increased steadily, but it really hasn't increased that much. So this is telling us the clearance rates are quite strong, but there's not that much stock. Now, while there's the claim that clearance rates and stock numbers often move in tandem, that kind of ignores the rules of supply and demand. In that the more supply that comes to market, the more choice purchases have. So therefore you're going to get lower clearance rates and you get more stock if you keep the number of buyers constant. So if one was to increase the number of properties coming to market, one might expect that clearance rate to taper off slightly. So we're seeing a high clearance rate, but there's low stock. Now, another couple of ways of looking at this that tell us that while this is a positive result with the clearance rates, it's not as strong as would be ideal is twofold. Firstly, prices have remained relatively stagnant. In some weeks, they're slightly higher. In some weeks, they're slightly lower. Now, at one point in time, the, the prices on average on these weekends were 880,000 in Melbourne, but that then tapered back a little bit over the next couple of weeks. So what we're seeing is that while there are some blips where there are high median prices, those blips tend to be paired back afterwards. So it's not like we're seeing a massive increase in prices throughout any of these weeks. The second thing that is a little bit of a negative signal is over the latest weekend, while it appears a lot of properties were going to go to auction, not that many auctions actually occurred, even when we take account of last minute withdrawals and including those as auctions that would have been scheduled. Put differently, vendors appear to be withdrawing their properties from auction before the auctions even occur. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us a couple of things. Either A, the vendor didn't think there were any interested buyers, so just decided to cancel the auction. Or B, the vendor wasn't confident about getting a good price at auction, so decided to just accept someone before the auction occurred. Either way, it's not necessarily a strong or positive signal if they're accepting a price well before auction. So what this basically tells us overall is that while clearance rates are relatively strong, there aren't that many properties and vendors still aren't that confident, suggesting that buyers perhaps aren't pushing up prices very much, which is manifesting in the price data. So in summary, basically we've got a, a lukewarm market, but it's not really a boom market at the moment. So what does this tell us going forward? Well, it tells us we need to be wary as more properties come to market throughout spring, which is what traditionally happens. Now, probably throughout spring, if more properties come to market, then if we keep the same number of buyers constant, which is probably going to be the case, buyers will have more options to choose from. So clearance rates might go down and or prices might go down or potentially both might occur. That will typically be the case in the first few weeks of spring as we get a glut of properties. So that's probably what will happen. But given that we have some positive signs, we probably won't get a massive drop off in any way in the Melbourne property market, but one would expect there be there to not likely be an increase throughout the whole of spring, given that there haven't been significant boom signs so far. So let's look at some of the drivers of that slightly positive result. Though I've mentioned some of these before when I indicated that the Melbourne property market is slightly recovering, or at least is kind of bottomed out, even if there isn't a boom. Now these, these drivers are really threefold. Firstly, the RBA cut rates by 50 basis points, which makes borrowing cheaper, both for existing debt and for future debt. Secondly, APRA reduced its serviceability assessments, so previously people would need to be assessed on whether they could repay the debt at 7% or higher. Now it's just the interest rate plus 250 basis points. That really benefits owner-occupier mortgages, where that significant change is going to help them the most. Now thirdly, we've also got the continued effect of the federal election, where there was the surprise victory of the coalition. Now the coalition was seen as more positive for the property market, which is a positive signal, which will eventually feed through to vendors being more confident to bring their properties to market, and also buyers being more confident about purchasing once they know that there won't be adverse changes to taxation. So I hope this gives you some insight about what's happened in the Melbourne property market. Why there's a slightly positive trend in the Melbourne property market, but why we're not really seeing a significant boom at this point in time. So I hope the video has been interesting to you. If it has, it would be great if you click the like and subscribe buttons, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.